I was in my teens when the movie Braveheart came out. I am a sucker for heroic action movies, so I'll readily admit I love Braveheart. Though, I didn't see it in the theater. Honestly, I think it, it took a little while until I got a hold of my own copy on VHS. One of the things that I remember standing out uh, was the movie's runtime. Two hours and 58 minutes. I remember friends who saw it in the theater telling me that there was a, an intermission halfway through. I was trying to confirm the detail recently. Uh, on Reddit, some suggest that Braveheart had an intermission, while others say no, or at least they don't recall. Who knows, maybe it was the individual theater's decision whether or not to get us out to the lobby to re-up on popcorn and candy. The movie Titanic came out two years later, topping Braveheart's runtime by 17 minutes, though James, James Cameron insisted that there be no intermission. Now, I talk of intermissions because we've encountered another in Revelation. Perhaps you recall that the sixth seal was opened in Revelation uh, 6, verse 12, but it's not until the beginning of, of chapter 8 that the seventh seal is opened. In a similar way, we've, we've gotten through six trumpets by the end of Revelation 9, with trumpets 5 and 6 being described as woes. Now we're going to leave off and, and change scenes in chapter 10 and won't be introduced to the seventh trumpet until two-thirds of the way through chapter 11, verse 15. We're in an intermission. That's not to suggest that there's no action occurring. John tells us, Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven. He was robed in a cloud with a rainbow above his head. His face was like the sun and his legs were like fiery pillars. He was holding a little scroll which lay open in his hand. He planted his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land and he gave a loud shout like the roar of a lion. When he shouted, the voices of the seven thunders spoke. John's words then I saw alert us to something new to be introduced. Rather than the expected third woe, we're made to wait as a, a new set of a new cast of characters takes the stage. Well, at least newish. <laughs> in chapter five, we were introduced to a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice who's worthy to break the seals and open the scroll. Here we encounter another mighty angel who, in verse three, we're told shouts in a loud voice. Not about a scroll, but he is carrying one. Now, where the mighty angels differ is in their description. While the previous angel was left without, about the second we are told much. And much of what we're told probably sounds eerily familiar. In Revelation 1-7, Jesus was spoken of as coming on the clouds. Chapter 4, the Father's throne is said to be encircled by a rainbow. In chapter 1, verse 15 and 16, Jesus countenance shines like the sun and his feet were like bronze glowing uh, glowing in a furnace now do you hear the echo the connection to jesus is so strong that some suggest that this mighty angel is him in angelic form or perhaps as he was manifest in the old testament as the angel of the lord now, the argument is persuasive except and he's called another mighty angel and there is no one like Jesus. Now, I don't really know what to, to make of it other than to quote one of my favorite scholars on Revelation, Greg Beale, who states, What people revere they resemble, either for ruin or restoration. Or perhaps more simply stated in the, the title of his book, We Become What We Worship. I know in, in this instance we're talking about an angel, not people, but it seems that this angel is so intimately associated with God the Father and Jesus the Son in presence and purpose that to experience this angel was to experience God's presence and glory. What if in some small way that could be said of us? That through our intimacy with God, being united with him and obedient to his purpose, to such an extent that some might say, I saw or I experienced God through you. That the reflection of his character, his mercy and grace would be so evident that some might say, I think that's, I think that's what God is like. 
may be said of us. Have a blessed week.